In this video, I'll be working through the 2017 scholarship physics exam. Question one. The graph shows that the theoretical sound frequency of a plane flying by an observation point P against the distance of the plane from that observation point. The plane is emitting a sound of frequency one times 10 to three hertz and is a constant speed relative to the ground. Didn't make any sense. Right, explain the physical process that causes the change in frequency. State any assumptions that are implied about the shape of the graph. So if we look at the shape of the graph, the assumption would be that here's the little man, or the observer, or whatever. The plane is flying directly towards him, and somehow this dude is levitating above the ground, or the plane is flying like two feet above the ground. Otherwise, if the plane was up here, and the little man was down here, you'd have some... I suppose, component of velocity towards the man, the little man um, that would decrease as the plane starts to become overhead. So I'm going to pause the video, write out this answer and then discuss. Right, what I've said is, as the plane flies towards point P, it gains on each wave front emitted. This causes an observed wavelength shortening due to the velocity being constant in a uniform medium. The assumptions are the medium is stationary, obviously no wind, otherwise it'll blow the sound wave left or right um, and the plane is moving directly towards P at a constant velocity so that means the little man is either way up in the sky or the plane is um, one of those Red Bull air races flying two feet above the ground um, right show that the planes I'll move that out of the way show that the planes waves uh, plane speed is 113 meters per second um, so this is fairly straightforward you have up here your observed frequency, so here is the observed frequency, here is the emitted frequency, it's just the uh, Doppler formula, so you've got F dash equals F VW over VW plus or minus V source, this is the speed of the wave, and that VS is the speed of the source. And now what do we got? So we'll move this slot up here, and because what will we do? We will make it as though, what shall we do? We'll move away from the source. Should we do that? Yeah, we'll move away from the source. That means we have to add the uh, wave speed, so we'll make the observed frequency a lot less. So we'll use 7.5 and we'll use one. Um, yeah, that'll do. Right, velocity of wave plus velocity of the source times the observed frequency is equal to the actual frequency times the velocity of the wave. And we're trying to find the velocity of the source. So what do we need to do? Expand this out and then divide by F. So we get Vs, I would have expanded that out. Um, it's going to be equal to v, no, F Vw divided by F dash minus V uh, velocity of the wave, because here I had the velocity of the wave and I would have divided by, hold up, no that's right, that's right, cool, and that is equal to, what do we got, F dash is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the, th to the 2, F or VW, it's just a speed of sound, 3.4 times 10 to the 2, that's 340 meters per second, and the observed frequency is 1000 hertz, so 1 times 10 to the 3, and that'll give us equal to, if you plug all this in, it should give you 113.33 1, meters per second, negative 1. Can we see that? Yes, and because we have what? 3, 3, 3, 3 SF, so everything needs to be 3 SF, so that is going to be equal to 1, 1, 3, meters per second, negative one. Right, sweet. Can we move this over a bit? Here we go. So, the plane flies with a constant speed of 113 meters per second at a height of, what's that, 500 meters from the observer on the ground. Calculate the frequency of the sound reaching the observer when the plane is seen to be directly overhead. So this is gonna be a bit of a, bit of a tricky one, but I'll break this page in half and we should easily be able to knock it out. So, we'll start with sort of the distances. We have, it's uh, 500 meters. 
above the ground and when you're standing here you're going to directly look up you'll see the plane but the sound waves would have come from somewhere over here so the sound waves probably would have come from over here because when you look up you know it's better light we can just assume in this case it travels at infinite speed um, which means sound waves travel way 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 slower so they probably would have come somewhere back here so we'll just draw a, and I'll draw a triangle here we go and the plane this distance here is going to be 113 times t because it's v times velocity times time it gives you distance and the time to, well the, the distance here is going to be we'll go 340 times the time so this this distance and this distance when these times are equal um, you'll get the angle so in other words how long it takes the time the sound to get from here to here and from here to here when these are equal we'll uh, we'll find out what this angle is because really we want, we want to find this component of angle we want to find this component of velocity of the 113 so the 113 13 meters per second has a velocity going sideways we want to find so I suppose like the not the vertical component the uh, sort of the velocity the direct velocity towards you um, so let's just write this out we have the hypotenuse and the adjacent so we're going to go cos cos theta is equal to the opposite which is 113 times time over the adjacent which is 340 times time well look at that time cancels out how neat is that and then it's going to give us cos inverse 113 over 340 equals uh, theta which is going to be equal to 70.59 degrees all right so at 70.59 degrees that's when you'll hear the sound when the plane is directly above like straight above you um, now we need to figure out what that component of velocity is towards you so rule of thumb is the fastest the plane can really ever go is 113 meters per second so that's going to be your hypotenuse now we draw our other two components of the triangle this here being 70 degrees let's put a theta here Here's a right angle. This you can use this trick. There's various ways to prove it uh, with um, was it year ten geometry, um, but it's easy just to memorize that the largest this will ever be is 113. Uh, or the largest is always the hypotenuse, which is always whatever you're given, generally speaking. Right. I don't explain that very well, but whatever. H the hypotenuse times cos theta is equal to the adjacent, which is what we're trying to find, Ooh. this component here. In other words, 113 cos 70.5, put some sort of brackets because that is messy as, is equal to 37.55 meters per second. And this is relative to the observer. I'm not gonna put relative to the observer, but it is, it is, that is the speed that the plane is flying towards the observer, if that makes any sense, because he's flying above at 130 meters, 113 meters per second, but he's coming towards the observer at 37.55 meters per second. When the when the plane is directly above, it's not coming towards or going away from the uh, from the observer because that distance isn't changing when he's directly above. Yeah, right. So you just substitute that straight back into the regular Doppler formula, which is going to be equal to F dash equals V, velocity of the wave over, um, velocity of the wave, and now we know that the frequency is going to be higher because it's coming towards, it's going to be minus the velocity of the source, and that'll give us, I'll just put, this is going to give us a high F dash um, expected, just because we know it should be higher, um, and now it's just simply plug and chug, so 1 times 10 to the 3 times 340, um, divided by 340 minus, what is it, 37.55, that's the speed of the source. That'll give us 124.15 uh, hertz, which is equal to 1.12 uh, times 10 to the 3 times, 10 to the 3 hertz, 3SF all again, same as usual. Right. The plane flies with a constant vertical lift force so that it maintains a uniform height. It's an unloaded mass of three tons. 
um, metric tons and is carrying a cargo pod of 1,000 kgs, one ton. When it is overhead, it drops a cargo pod but maintains the same vertical lift force. Calculate the vertical separation between the pod and the plane when the pod has been falling for 1.5 seconds. So this is going to be a mixture of uh, Newton's laws, free body diagrams, and kinematics, which are all sort of come under Newton's laws. So first we'll just draw a free body diagram. And originally, we have FL is equal to FG. So FG, FL, I should use a ruler, but I'm not, because I can't be bothered. Um, so now we'll just put originally, generally, um, the lift force, FL, is equal to the gravitational force. In other words, um, that is equal to 4, because there's a total weight of the plane, um, 4 times 10 to the 3, it's easy, just that plus that, times 9.81, because you should know that quite hard by now. Um, and that is the lift force. So now we have a bit of a problem. Now we've got the net force, F net, and this is, so the net force here is just equal to 0. Now the F, the net force isn't. That is equal to... Um, if lift force minus the gravitational force, because these two vectors are pointing in opposite directions, um, which will equal the original lift force, which is just going to be you know, 4 times 10 to the 3 times 9.81 minus the new weight, which is going to be 3 times 10 to the 3 times 9.81. You could have seen what I could have done. I could have just got 1 times 10 to the... Uh, 1 times 10 to the 3 times 9.81. And that would have given me um, the uh, new net force. Um, but we'll just you know, leave it there. So now we know we can figure out acceleration is just force over mass. So we'll go force net of the uh, of this here divided by the the new mass of the plane, mass of the plane, and that'll give us this, the net acceleration, um, which is equal to 3.21 meters per second negative uh, two, because it's acceleration, not negative one, and just three SF again. So now we have, it is accelerating upwards at 3.21 meters per second. Now it's just simply um, plug and chug into, we'll find it here, how much time we got? Um, no, it's a level two formula. Plug and chug into the distance equals VIT plus half AT squared. You should know that off by heart. So we're going to put D pod on the distance of the pod from like where it was dropped. Half minus 9.81 times 1.5 seconds squared gives me minus 11.036 meters. And distance of the plane is equal to, same again, half. Um, I put a negative there just because this should really be times, whatever. Because um, that's, we look, it's accelerating downwards. Times, uh, what is it, 3.21 times 1.5 squared gives me, what does it give me? 3.61 meters. So the total distance, what are we asking for? Yeah, total vert vertical separation. Total is equal to 14.64 meters or 14.6 uh, meters, and you can put 3SF, but whatever.